Welcome to Believe in 76ers with your host, former 76ers point guard Eric Snow and two Sixers fanatics in Marcus and Tasia Dash. Believe in 76ers is presented by betonline.ag. BetOnline remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season. Everything from NFL playoffs to pro and college basketball, UFC, MMA, and much more. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at BetOnline. With live betting options, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. BetOnline is truly the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite leagues and events. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use promo code BELIEVE. That's B-L-E-A-V to receive your rewards. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Believe in 76ers podcast. I'm Marcus Dash here with legendary 76ers point guard Eric Snow and my brother, Tasia Dash. We kind of had a little conversation off camera about rivalry week. Um, and we, we we ended last show. I didn't realize that this week the NBA has deemed this whole entire week rivalry week. That's why we saw Simmons and MB the other night, and now we're going to see Jokic uh, and MB uh, tomorrow on Saturday. Uh, but Eric, there was no, there was nothing called rivalry week back in the day when you, when, when you were playing. There was not, not a week dedicated to it back. Yeah, in the day. I don't believe that they had a week dedicated to it. I mean, it may have been, it may have been particular games. Um, that they may have, you know, make like maybe like a TNT Thursday or ESPN, whatever. They may have a particular day that was dedicated for that. But I, I don't remember the schedules being made for it to be like a week. Um, so it, it might have started something like that when I was with um, Cleveland later on. But I, I do not remember that being a focus while playing for the Sixers. I love the rivalries also not like the Celtics or the team related, it's a rivalry with Embiid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, that's the one thing, you know, it's more, and I don't want to say it's like an NBA thing because the NFL do the same thing um, with quarterbacks and stuff like that. So it's, yeah. it's, they make it more player driven, you know, mm-hmm. with, with quarterbacks. I totally do not understand how, you know, somebody can beat somebody and they don't, they're on the field at the same time. Yeah. Remember, yeah. They just watch each other on the sidelines. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I mean, it's something that I guess fans are interested in because they, you know, multiple sports seems to do it. Mm. Yeah, you and I were laughing about that, Marcus. How they always like say, like you know, Joe Burrow versus Mahomes. They don't even like they don't even pass each other on the field once in yeah, that. that like I, that like that <laughs> like that's like crazy to me. And people like really, really like hold Believe it against it. the guy. Like, yeah, man, hold it against Mahomes if they, you know, what I'm saying Mahomes lose. I had someone tell me this. Man, Mahomes, you know, it's it, if he lose the Burrow, the, you know, it's gonna be. I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. What Burrow's the, gonna Burrow's gonna own him, even though he never what, played. What is it, what's going to happen? And he was, and he's like, man, I just know, man. Every time he don't beat them like four times, you you can't be one of the top quarterback. I said, and I said, you know what? You know, I got something for you. And I sent him this link. And you know what the link said? Joe right. Burrow is one and four against the Browns. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, so what are you saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he owns Mahomes, but so do the Browns own him? Mm-hmm. You know, so, like, come on. Now. Just stop with the silly stuff. Yeah. And, you know, they so. Also don't say, they also don't want to say Eli Manning owns Brady. Come on. Now. You're like. Of course yeah, not. But I'm just saying, like, but I just think with the league, it. it I wouldn't necessarily call it a rivalry with, like. Joker and Joel, I would just say it's a big game against top players. You know, it's the same play the same position. Like it's a it's a built in intrigue because they're both MVP candidates and yeah, you know, should maybe should have been split instead of two zero. You know what I'm saying? Like it's um so that that caused intrigue, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's a rivalry. Mm-hmm. I mean, play twice a week. I mean, twice a year. So. I don't, I don't, I don't get the player rivalry mm-hmm. um, for people to say that in a team sport. But then guys are called selfish if they say anything like about themselves. Yeah, yeah, of um, course. But you know, it, it's int- like I say, it's intriguing because they're 
because of the optics that come with it. Um, like mm -hmm. the optics that came with the Nets and the Sixers and Ben Simmons, but I wouldn't call it a rivalry. It's just the optics that came with it. Call that a hatred? I don't know. I don't know what to call that. I mean, it's not a rivalry. I mean, like, Ben plays James Harden position, technically. Like, they just got traded for each other. That happens all the time. That make it a rivalry. Mm -hmm. I guess it's the circumstances behind the acquisition. Now, the late game on Saturday, the Lakers in Boston, I believe, yeah. that's a rivalry. Yeah, that's a legitimate one. You got history. You got history in the finals and in different eras. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah. they yeah. have the same. I believe they had the same amount of championships. Like that's that's it gets no bigger than that. Now, yes, you yeah. can definitely hype that one up. And that's throughout different saying, eras, different players. Yes, you know. Well, it just, yeah. it I mean, I so get deep. it. I get it. I get it. If the Sixers are playing Boston, the Knicks, mm -hmm. I think is this because it's history there. Mm -hmm. It's been history throughout years, but Sixers don't have a rivalry with Denver. Yeah, it's not a rivalry. The, yeah. You know, like I said, the players may have one, but not not the teams. Yeah, the, the three games that you've deemed for the Saturday rivalry games is us, us and Nuggets, and then Nets and Knicks uh, as the second game, and then the third game, Celtics and Lakers. I would call that. I would call that a rivalry, especially since they moved to Brooklyn, and you know they. Yeah, I, I can I can see that, even though I didn't really see it like that when it was Knicks Nets. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's 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 a rivalry to especially to that area. I guess like proximity or make it around. Yeah, to that area, I, I definitely think it is. But you know, nationally, what the Knicks is, have been versus the Nets, and you know, in the longevity of this thing, it's not really looked at like that. In a competition wise, no. Yeah. But yeah, in, in the fan base wise too, you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. uh, it's not like it's split. It's not, you know, it's not like you know when the Knicks play, you know, Boston. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think the Knicks Boston is a bigger rivalry than Knicks Nets. Yeah, yeah. it's like Mets Yankees. I mean, Yankees Boston's obviously a bigger rivalry, but Mets Yankees, yeah, it's a, it's a rivalry. Inner city yeah. or the same city. It's enough to market after it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the bottom line for the NBA. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, market market it. It, it marketed it. Marketed it. 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 I'm just saying, like, I just, I think it's a big game and it's a significant game. It's it's just not a rival to me. Yeah, yeah. play New York, New York after after every commercial break. You know, come on, it's, it's it right. <laughs> it writes itself. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, and also on the uh, the, the quarterback versus quarterback head to heads, uh, I saw someone tweet uh, Jake Plummer was three and zero against Tom Brady in his career. Mm, yeah, I read that one too. Yeah, Jake Plummer good. owned Tom Brady, I guess. <laughs> that's that's one of that's one of the worst things I've seen um, that people talk about and like keep talking about. Yeah, like so trying to make a it a, quarter, thing. a quarterback owns a quarterback, like different players with them, different players. Across across the line, like mm -hmm. it's just I just now you can say a quarterback played better, but to outplay you know to to own a guy that he doesn't even compete against like mm -hmm. that's that's just weird to me. I'd it's say not like he, it's not like as a pitcher throwing to a batter. Or, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'd not say it goes passing. more like quarterback you, versus D coordinator than anything. Yeah, yes, yeah, so it's not even like you know a you know a, a on in basketball where you're actually defending someone. Mm -hmm. Um, back and forth, I, I just just the quarterback thing. I just don't, I just don't get it. Like, yeah, it's just it's just for narrative and and you know talk shows. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, of course, talking heads. See. Was that a thing in the nineties? Because I, I mean, I was growing up. I just remember Brady Manning being the uh, the quarterback versus quarterback thing. Was that a thing in the nineties? Was there anybody? It wasn't really a Brady Manning thing either. It was just a Manning thing for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, true. It was just a Peyton Manning thing. Then Peyton Manning, um, from what I remember, Peyton Manning was dominating everyone, especially from a statistical standpoint and winning. Mm -hmm. Then when he didn't win in the playoffs, it became, oh, oh he's just, he just yeah. a regular season quarterback. Yeah. You know, the, the, you know, winning, winning um, mattered then. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say when people always talk about these – Winning and you don't need championships like the goalpost is always changing because yeah 
Peyton Manning was – they were so critical of Peyton Manning because his teams didn't win Super Bowls. All you do is get stats. You didn't win Super Bowls. Um, but now, that, only seemed, that only seemed to really matter once there was another quarterback who started winning consistent Super Bowls. You know what I mean? Like once yeah, but I'm just saying, winning, like, but and it was like, whoa. That's, that's what I say, like, from Tom Brady's standpoint, statistically and, and performance-based, it wasn't even close. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It back wasn't then even they, close. Back then they used to call me, uh, uh, Brady a system quarterback. I could, it wasn't even close as far as, you know, and then, of course, Tom with the longevity. But just look how long it took him to play to pass all Peyton Manning's records. Yeah. Not only that, I remember back in the day, they wouldn't even – it was more, like we said a minute ago, it was Manning versus Belichick, what they used to say. It used to be like, how is Belichick going to game plan Manning? How is Manning yes. going to get around Belichick's game plan? Yes. They didn't even talk about Brady for a while. Yes. It was all like it coach even, versus Manning. Then, when then we start winning them championships, it's like – Changed a little bit, this, you know, and he made plays in those championships. You know what I'm saying? Like he, yeah, yeah. He made he made things happen. Um, it is true. But I, I mean, I don't, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I just think that Peyton Manning becoming. I mean, I'm saying or Tom Brady becoming who he is. What? Why? Why should that be a negative for Peyton Manning to what he did? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like Joe Burrow having to beat the the Chiefs. He could. It's it's very. Possible that the Bengals beat the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes plays better. Mm-hmm. That's very possible. Yeah. Yeah. But if he loses it, that, that, that but if you, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So that's the goalpost because if Joe Burrow plays better and loses, it's, well, he still played better. Mm-hmm. It's, it's almost like a Lose, lose for Patrick Mahomes because yep. he's viewed as the guy that's supposed to be better and supposed to win. Where Joe yep. Burrow is viewed as the guy that's not supposed to be better and not supposed to win. Yeah, mm-hmm. I told Marcus the same thing about if we if, if the Chiefs played Purdy and the Niners in the Super Bowl. Um, if Purdy wins, he's the next big star. But if Purdy loses, it's oh, oh, Mahomes beat Purdy to win a Super Bowl, big deal, you know. So that's what says you know, but that's. It also depends on who you're listening to. So yeah, some people talk like that. You probably shouldn't be listening to. Ninety nine percent of the talking heads out there on the national on the national stage. <laughs> yeah, they have influence on some people too. That's un- you know that's the unfortunate thing. Oh yeah, yeah. They, um, they, you know, they really get emotional about this. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I was curious too, like on the national stage, the sim, the Sixers and Nets game didn't get talked about uh, enough. And that's what we're going to talk about our, with our first topic here. But that, I, the next day, I was watching to see how much that was going to be talked about. Didn't get talked about at all. I think ESPN used it as a, as a, a first take, used it as a, as a way to talk about Kyrie um, getting a con- new contract in Brooklyn. They didn't even talk about the game. It was, just, it was, it was a segue. Really, it was an opener. Uh, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, I mean, I think with Katie injured. It kind of, from a talking standpoint, it kind of takes some luster out mm-hmm. because it's like, well, the Sixers should win. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 the, and the first time we played them, it, it was a, it was a detriment to KD. They talked about it as like, wow, is this Brooklyn team done? They're, they're losing. They're losing to the uh, the, the the reserves yes. of the Sixers. Yes, but if we did they lose talked, that game, but they talked about it though, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because there was drama involved. But if they lo- if we lost to the Nets the other night, it'd be a lot more yes. talking about. Yes, yeah, negative sales. Yes. Um. Okay, so we'll, we'll begin with uh, talking about this uh, this Nets and Sixers game. Um. Uh, so obviously, extremely intense game from the from the jump. Um. Seven technical fouls, sixty three foul shots in the game, and just a lot of chippy moments, a lot of stills that people will share forever with uh, Simmons or MB posting up Simmons. Um. After the game, Embiid said he looked to dominate who who was in front of him, um, just like any other night. But Doc had to say this after the game. Uh, quote, there's a difference between intensity, playing with emotion, and being too emotional. We were on the wrong side of that a lot tonight. It's good to have emotions. You want to have intensity and emotion, but you don't want to be emotional. Um, obviously, the guys were intense, but do you agree with Doc that we were too emotional on a Tuesday night? Um, I don't really know if emotional is the right word. It, I would say it was personal. 
it felt personal to me. I don't I don't think, you know, I think guys play with emotion almost all the time. Um, some games are bigger than others. So you won't have a little more enthusiasm and even the fans are different in some games versus other games. Um, but it felt personal. Some reasons we may know, some reasons we may not know. <laughs> um, but it's guys that didn't play with Ben Simmons that kind of, it felt personal. Mm -hmm. Um, so which leads me to think you just don't know what's being said on the court. You don't you don't really know the conversations are, that are being had or you know between the players. I mean, because and B's biggest blow up was against Claxton, not Ben Simmons to me. Yeah, you know? it's true. So you just and he said he said something that you know he shouldn't have said. But whatever that was, so that's that's my thing. It's just that that game became personal because if someone says something you don't like, you confront them. That to me, that isn't necessarily emotional. That's checking somebody. That's personal. I'm checking that dude for what he said to me. So I understand. I I get what Doc is saying, but I, I, I just I would say it's a little more personal like issues with people or team or whatever. Well, whatever you want to call it, intensity, emotional, personal. I loved it. It was, it was, it was great. It was really entertaining. It was maybe the most engaged I've seen the Sixers as a team this season. Um, and I think it was one of those games that really helps the team come together. Like you fight together or you fall apart. Right. I mean, I, I just feel like you get this, you get everyone on board together. It, it was like the, um, it was like the Simmons and Embiid, a uh, 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 cat chokehold. Like when I saw that originally, I was like, because there was only questions about Simmons not getting along with people and people not gelling. So when I saw Simmons putting cat in a chokehold in defense of Embiid, I was like, dude, yeah, I love that's great that he's he's one of the guys. He's he's willing to go into the trenches and fight, right? Um, that's kind of like this. Like you saw, um, you saw Niang like fighting with Simmons, and what they didn't even play together. So it was like you, you just—it's a camaraderie. I hate who you hate. I like who you like. Type thing for the most part. Um, and I was totally wrong on this being another game when we talked about this on the last show. Uh, <laughs> it was not another game at all. Um, I underestimated and some of Embiid's pettiness, I guess. Um. And B definitely took took the game personally. Uh, there was no question about it. You don't always dribble. I'm sorry. We were just talking about the Hakeem in the pain thing. You don't always do that. No, he doesn't. <laughs> you don't always back someone down the way you did against him. You saw a limping antelope and you attacked him. And that was personal. And you didn't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, he, he backed him down more than he did Royce O'Neal. At, at a couple occasions. Yeah. Joe Harris when he had to switch anyone when he switched yes. on, they were all they were all mismatches. Yeah. Um, but I think you're right though. I think the clack I think at one point, I think Claxton overtook Simmons on his like shit list. I think he wanted to like get him more than anyone. Um and and Claxton's a little more formidable. Um but yeah, I, I just I see what Doc's saying. I'd like us to be in check a little more. Uh I think part of that was I think part of that was frustration towards some bad calls. It wasn't all like nets related. Uh, the the Kyrie slipping call was awful. Yeah. He just fell. Now, man, I don't even and I wasn't in, and I think Joel was engaged and it was personal, but I don't think he particularly played it well. No, he didn't. <laughs> what was he six you know, of eighteen? It, it, the free throws helped him. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, Cla Clax's numbers were just almost as good. Yeah, they're better. He was, I think, ten of eleven. With no plays. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he so, had some like crazy flip ups that went in. I was like, how does how are some of these going in? Um, but yeah, no, the Kyrie foul was bad. There were a bunch of offensive fouls called on us when like either Simmons was just bear hugging someone or someone was getting pushed in the back. There was a lot of that kind of stuff, and I, I think that made it even worse. I think we kind of would have went with it depending on what the game feeling was. But Brooklyn kind of came out of the gates shoving, giving some forearms. We're like, all right, you want to play like that? Brooklyn came out like they tried to punk him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, okay. Like they, they really, that's how they came out there. So that's what I'm saying. That's personal. That's yeah. not emotional. I think we kind of reacted to that. I don't I don't think we came out thinking. Yeah. Like, oh, they gonna... think this is sweet. Oh, they think this is sweet. Yeah. 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 I think we were like, oh, oh, we were going to actually just play basketball tonight. You you want to, you want to do, you want to do that kind of stuff? All right. Well, watch this Let's now. Yeah. Tie, 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 tie your shoes tighter. Pull up your shorts a little bit. Tuck your shirt, truck your jersey in. And let's go do some stretches. Um, but I, I'm I'm glad they got out of their system a little bit too. Uh, I like that they played that way because Doc, I think, was said what he said also to set it up for the future. Like when you face this kind of adversity, when you feel like you want to like clock someone, don't um, um, keep it in check. I, I don't. Th- I think it was more about the future. Yeah, that now that's true. You know, with not that I, I I totally see you. Like you got to keep your emotions in check because we don't need technicals. We don't need guys getting suspended or yep. kicked out of the game. Like. Yep. That I do understand, and and the way it's going, you know, with you know, this could be a team that we see in that second round. Oh yeah, or first round, definitely. And if we do with KD on the court, who's one of the masters of talking shit, there might be suspensions in that series, man. One There's of the masters of backing it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. He does. I loved. Uh, he was tweeting during the game. And I, I was loving. I was loving it because. You know he wants to be out there. I also found it funny. I told Marcus, I was like, I love how he said, "Man, I wish I was out. I wish I was out there talking shit to Embiid and Harold." It was like, <laughs> I love how Harold's like one of the guys that he wants to like talk shit to. Because it must be, it's a it's a history there. You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. That's, what I'm, saying. That's right. what I'm saying. Like you really just don't always like people act like we know what the, you just don't know what guys say. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, if we do play them again, we're gonna have to definitely keep our emotions in check. Is that will be a really because you you can't game. tell me it's not personal for Seth. And he oh, yeah, play, yeah, he plays well against us consistently since we've he heard does him. man, <laughs> and he's always chirping and looking at the bench. Mm-hmm. He kept him in that game, and multiple times there were multiple times where we got it back up to like double digits, and then like and boom, did, Seth yeah. hit like two threes in a row back to back, and it was like oh man, like. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was um, it was great. I love that. I love that game. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was at the end of the first quarter. Uh, is when that they showed Simmons like blow a kiss on our bench. Mm. That, that that infuriated me. If that's a that, that's getting me, man. I can't imagine a player <laughs> seeing that, seeing him throw a blow a kiss at me. Oh man, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That bothered you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we were watching. I was like, "Did he just blow a kiss?" And like, I because I, it was commercial break right after that. So I, I rewinded it. And like we slowed it down. It was like you, you, you saw him blow a kiss. So I was like, "Dude, that's." I can guarantee you, whatever they saying is worse than them blowing a the kiss. Yeah. Yes. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it goes. Yeah, I that really did actually. Yeah, that really infuriated me. Um, <laughs> it, it's funny. It's funny though. It goes back to. I remember that clip, which I hated at the time because he played for us when we played the Bucks, and Giannis bullied Simmons and dunked it. And he said he's a big baby, he's just a big baby. I never really got that till he went to the Nets or until the way he left the Sixers. But now it all <laughs> it all makes sense now. Like I, I I I go back to that and I'm like, man, I know exactly what he means. Like I was like, what does he mean? What does he mean? Like he just bullied him, but like I think it's even more than that. Like it's just man, yeah, blowing kisses, man. Oh, yeah. uh, two more games against Brooklyn, uh, February 11th. We travel to, to Brooklyn. Um, I think that might be one of the last games before All-Star break. If I, if the dates are correctly. Like February 11th is Saturday, um, probably the last like weekend before. Um, and then April 9th, we play them again at Brooklyn. So two more games, two more. I'm probably, two- I'm probably going to that, that game. That, that probably, won't, most guys probably, if, if it's settled by then, that could be a big game, and that could be a game where no one plays. I'm True. hoping they all play because I'm. I'm probably. Is that the last game of the year? It got to be the last game or next to last game. I think it's yeah. second. I think it's second to last, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's it's at the, it's it's at the tail end though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It could be a game that's needed for um, playoff positioning, or it could be a game that's the, that is the last. But one. no one plays. Oh, it's the last game. Yes, yeah, last game yeah. of the season. Yeah, that's what I thought. The way the seating's going, they're gonna play. Right now, at least the way it's tight. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think it would be within the game by the time it's – now, it it may be within the game for one team, mm-hmm. but I don't know if it would be within the game for both – for those particular teams, both teams. 
Yeah. I think I think the seedings will be set by the end. You think so? Yeah, I believe so. And Simmons might not even be playing in that game based on what we saw last night. Uh Jock Vaughn rolling his eyes saying he has knee soreness. <laughs> so you may that, that you may not see Simmons in that game, Tish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. That's rough, man. Knee soreness after getting like touched on the face. What, what do you make of that, Eric? When, when you, you you saw Jock Vaughn's press conference with him rolling his eyes saying knee soreness. What, what, what do you make of that? Just that, that glimpse right there. I mean, I think it was, you know, if I'm taking it from older coaches that, you know, Doc is, I mean, Jock is actually younger than me. I'm just saying, but coaches that he played for, that we played for in the league, it it was always a give me what you have. Like your 70, 75% is better than maybe someone else's 80 or 95% or just try to play. Um, but I think in Ben's case, it's almost like he took himself out, if I'm right. Yeah. No, he like walked um, right to the locker room. Yeah, and so he took back. himself out. And if a doctor go in and say structurally everything's good, um, most guys be like, all right, I'm going to go back out there. Is knee soreness like the miscellaneous general I can't play tonight thing that no one can really – dispute i mean i guess you know the one thing i do know about injuries um you, you know every, you just can't talk about someone else's body like they they really they were the ones that know so what may be knee soreness for him um may be knee pain for some and maybe nothing for some of us just just to, you know so you just can't question that because you really yeah. authentically really don't know um, yeah, it's a little unfair to do that. I agree. It, it, we'll see if this is, you know, I didn't hear anything about an MRI or a him having any structural damage. Um, if that doesn't happen, then we don't know because I didn't even see the injury. I didn't. I don't really know if it was. There, was, there wasn't. There wasn't. I'm one. Just saying, I don't know if it was something that happened before that. Is what I'm saying. I didn't oh, see okay. that particular play, but was there something that? I, you know, aggravated before, and then that particular play made it worse. Like that's the part like you really don't know. Like, so that could have happened. Yeah. All well, I was, know is you know he was over. On- he was over one in that game, and uh, a Nets fan on the thread said, "I watched him all game. He didn't move. He didn't do anything. There's no reason for that knee to be injured." <laughs> <laughs> based on Jock's reaction, it's it's it did come off as if. Not that he's necessarily faking, but that it feels like he's not buying it completely. No, I, I wouldn't really say that he's not buying it. It's almost like, like he still won't try to play. Like he, well, I, we feel like he's, we feel like he still could have played. Mm. Mm. That's kind of the vibe I got from the conversation. Like we didn't think that this was something that he should have like not tried to play from. But Kyrie said recently they got rid of all the uh, halfway in guys. I wouldn't That's necessarily what happened with that. I wouldn't say he's halfway in. I think he's all the way in. In what the locker room? <laughs> yeah, I think he's all the way in. I just think that um, you know he's all the way in the locker room when everyone's on the court is what just, he is. Man, everybody's not built the same, man. I know you tougher than Marcus, right? <laughs> The baby, the baby ain't tough as you, man. He ain't been through what you've been through. He's spoiled, man. <laughs> See? Yeah. 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 That's, that's, you know, I come from the same fabric, and he's still not the same as you. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Yeah. I mean, that's what they say about me and my older siblings, but I can't. I'm just assuming y'all say that about Marcus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they think, they think I'm soft, for sure. Yeah, I was spoiled, and they say the same stuff about me, too, Marcus. Don't feel, don't feel bad. Don't. Let's own that. Yeah. Let's own that being spoiled. <laughs> he's soft, but he's a little scrappy bastard on the court. He'll grab your jersey. He'll do all the Stockton tricks. Grab your jersey, tug on you a bit when you're trying to get away from him. All, all, he does all that stuff. Oh, okay. Got some tricks. Yeah. You call it tricks. You call it something else. 
Hook the hook the arm then and put your hands up. Hook the arm. Yeah, that, that that's the old Rodman right there. Most people just call it foul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he's got the Draymond Green pick where he just comes it rolls up like this and just it just comes out and tries to move you out of the way like a like a pulling fullback pulling guard. Um, all that. Yep. Hey man, all, all one sixty two of me. He's got to do what I got to do, man. So he, he he seems like a guy you would want on your team, right? Yeah, I certainly don't call fouls when I'm on his team for it. That's for sure. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, a- after uh, last day, you, you mentioned Kyrie. Kyrie did – a lot of people are, are taking Kyrie's post-game press co- uh, comments a little bit towards Simmons based on what he said after Jock's comments. Uh, but, quote, I can show um, – I show a consistency to continue to work on my off days and before the games. They continue to prepare at a high level – People are saying he's insinuating that other players on the team aren't doing that. They're, they aren't showing consistency. People but, love insinuating Kyrie's comments, don't they? He has to be the most insinuated player <laughs> in the NBA on every topic. Like, people just love taking yeah, He's comments. probably talking about a particular guy, but we don't have to necessarily say he's been. Yeah. <laughs> that's and everyone, that's everyone the thing. Like, that's – for people to say it's been, it's the history. Like yeah. you, well, you got to be talking about Ben. Yeah, we don't know if he is though. <laughs> and Ben was a guy that Vaughn yeah. just pretty much didn't play hardly the fourth mid midway to the end of the fourth quarter, from like seven minutes on, eight minutes on. Yeah, yeah apparently that's a, that's a trend though. Because I've been reading, I thought that was something that just again saw us. Apparently, last like last five or four minutes of games, they've been taking Ben out of games that there there was some kind of they were close in. Uh, which is something that Doc got shit for taking him out in the fourth quarter towards the end of his time in Philadelphia. Yep. So it's funny now that's becoming a normal thing. Yeah, for I mean, I don't, think, I don't even know. Like with Ben, like it's, it's just still interesting to me that that people don't even take fouls on. Yeah, I know. That's, I mean, that's how you know they probably feel his, his limited impact. Like they don't, it's like no one fouls. They just let him shoot. Like that's like really interesting to me. I know. That's going to happen a lot in the playoffs, though. Without a doubt, and that's why it's going to be different for him because he he's not he's not playing through that this whole year. Like no one's trying to play in one game and and go to that. Um, but later in this year, when teams start fighting for seeds, you'll see it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, okay, so the next time we talk about rivalry week, so we got past the one rival uh, with uh, the Ben Simmons and the and the Nets. Now we're moving on to. Uh, Jokic and the Nuggets. So um, Embiid averaging uh, 34 and 10, uh, one of, and one of the better defensive bigs in the league, uh, the leader of the number two seed in the East, and he's not starting on the NBA All Star game. And actually, the Kia just uh, released their rankings for the MVP ladder, and, and Embiid's number two on that. Um, so all the NBA truthers, they think it's another snub for uh, uh, for Embiid uh, with another uh, another snub along with all the other ones he's had so far in his career. And on Saturday, facing off against Jokic, the two-time MVP. Um, Embiid said when he asked about this matchup, he said it's it's not it's not a Jokic versus Embiid, it's Denver versus Philadelphia. So kind of playing off what we've been talking about so far. But do you guys believe that? Do you guys it is think it for, for Embiid's mind, it is Denver versus Philly, not him versus Jokic. And as we saw, you know, he was going against Simmons, even though he probably said it's just another game for him, but he was going against Simmons harder than we've seen before. So do you think there's gonna be some extra juice on the line in this one, or is it just a regular Denver versus Philadelphia game? Yeah, it's a regular game, but it should be more than a regular game for him. Um, like this is like if the Joker was to come in and statistically play better, and and the Denver beats us, it it kind of like you know, I told y'all he's better. He is the MVP. Mm-hmm. So reverse that, order, though. huh? Reverse that though. Would it be the same the other way around? No, I think that if he if he did that and he dominated him, I mean, he dominated. He statistically he was better, and the team wins. People will look at it differently. Like you know, maybe he got. Him. And then you go to Denver and do the same thing. That's where I think it would really flip. Um, I think most people viewed it. The Sixers probably should win this game at home. Mm-hmm. So. You don't get as much as much credit for winning the home game, but if you win this and you play better, and then you go out to Denver when we go out there and do the same thing, that'll carry a lot of weight. 
I, it, it will carry a lot of weight. Um, because personally, you did better, and team-wise, your team did better. Uh, because a lot of people that's saying Joker should win the MVP this year, they're big on the team being the top top record in the West. Mm -hmm. So if you're beating, if your team is beating that team, that's that helps. Yeah, he's playing better. Numbers are great. Leading the league score, whatever, whatever you want to say, and the team's better, and the team proved they were better. And because the team being better, winning that game, and feeling like they're better is is, is a bigger reflection on those two players. You ever see the water boy when he um, imagines Adam Sandler imagines uh, the coach on everyone's uh, head, their face. Yeah. That's going to be like, that's going to be NB seeing like Hakeem's face on Jokic all, all night when he backs him down and plays against him. <laughs> um, but it shouldn't take Hakeem to say something for it to be like that if that's the case. I, yeah. I know, but it's funny, but. When I was thinking, like <laughs> MB versus Joker, he's really not Joker. the one that's playing. Yeah, he's the one that's playing. It it's should really, be his face. It's really MB versus like the voters, and then beat versus you know uh, um, uh, the fans. And it could and, be, and the, teams, it, it, it could the be the voters, but like, like if you think back to any kind of like Magic and Bird, like they had rivalry, they played against each other in college and carried it on in the NBA. Like you think. Magic had anybody else's face other than Bird's face? You think Bird had anybody else's face other than Magic? No, I'm going, you. I want to be you and your team. You know, back then, guys That's hated, how it should be. Back then, guys hated their opponents, man. You know, they weren't friends in the, in the mid, late 80s yet. I mean, it's different because they didn't have all the access to be able to communicate and hang yeah. out with guys. But that, went, that, that, went, that was a part of it. Now these guys are all vacation together and family the godfather of each other's kids man like everyone I don't think Embiid, but i don't think Embiid and joker are, are close like that i'm sure i'm sure they're fine but i'm sure they're not like not vacationing like what, 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 no what, no what? they're not but they've been very cordial i mean even i was gonna say even joker said recently their last night or today that mb deserves a start in the all-star game um like lobbying for him right so like that it's just that that's the kind of you know camaraderie you see with them because they're both bigs they're both they're both bigs in a not very crowded big NBA anymore. It's like them two and like a drop, right? So there's just not many like them anymore. They are two of that very small endangered species. Mm -hmm. Um, I do think you'll have extra juice for this because I, not as much for the jokage part, but definitely for the all the naysayers, the two MVPs. I'm never going to underestimate MB's pettiness ever again. Like he remembers, he's got a very long memory with things, especially negative things. So he's Definitely remembers the MVP snubs. He did that. All Star is fresh. Um, I even think the fact that he's second on the list makes it even worse because it's like, so I'm second overall in the league, but I can't even start my conference. Like that's crazy. It just doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. It's, it's not. It's not voting. It's different voters. Yeah. No. I know. Yeah. So he's seeing like voters on that. Head. Like I don't. I don't. I don't understand why people think it's a surprise that. Joel's not starting based on how the voting goes. Like I just, I don't, I don't. Why do you? Why do we think that's a surprise? I mean, is, yeah. is, the, is the first time? What was the last time he wasn't a starter in the All Star game? Like four years? Mm, I don't know. I have to look that up. Yeah, I mean, I just like it. it it's if you went, if you looked at. The three guys that were ahead of him, you put them like head to head and hold people on who was more popular. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he lost those polls on those three guys that got in. Mm -hmm. So he deserves it, definitely. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's like as long as they got three three votes for that position, one of those four, the three of those four are gonna get votes. Yeah. For the most part, every time. I saw someone saying they could have moved Tatum to two, got rid of Mitchell, and then had all three guys. At yes, but that's what that's the that's the thing that surprised me that Boston has Tatum as the three and Brown as the two. And, and that's I don't that's not even how they even play. Yeah. Speaking so of he, Boston. Maury called out um, specifically the shameless Boston media for being way overrepresented in all-star selection process. 
So there's that also. Yeah, I wouldn't know about that, but <laughs> I'm sure that's they gonna, you know, they get what three votes too, right? At that position. Oh, the, I, I thought you meant yeah, but the Boston media, I think Ringer has like five people voting and Boston Globe has two. Maybe that's what he meant. No, I'm just saying, but all of those voters, voters, all of those voters could have voted for Tatum and Joel. Right? They're probably, I mean, I'm just saying, they could have, right? We could have. Yeah, probably, I assume they're Philly haters, so maybe they don't want to do that. It could be Nets haters and Bucks haters, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're looking at it from one angle right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, but, you know, he, from the fan vote who got 50% of the votes, he was fourth, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Problem is, though, I think. And he was leading at one time. I think Giannis is undeniable, though. He has a ring, too. I mean, you can't, like, you can't. You can justifiably hate on Embiid and still call him overrated. And he's a he's a he's a foul baiter. And he's a flopper. He's never going to be successful because he hasn't won. So they have like a good uh, um, evidence to show their opinions right. You can't really do that with Giannis anymore. You can't do that with Durant, right? So you can't I mean, do that I, with them. I think I think Giannis and Durant got probably more history of of of, of acceptance. Um, They're bigger names. Tatum went to the finals last year, so I think it's some carryover. Um, and he was, and he was playing really, really well. Yeah, and and Joel, a part of me thinks him missing the time early might have impacted him. And while he was missing that time, those three guys were playing. Mm-hmm. So I think KD got hurt, but I think the the drawing was already done by the time he went down. Mm. Um, so well, we don't know. I mean, you look at the West. I mean, Zion, I don't remember the last time Zion played and he made it. I was going to gonna bring <laughs> it up, actually. Yeah, so, a lot of people were dogging that. And everyone that yeah. defends brings up potential. It's like, man, this isn't this isn't the potential but it, vote. And then, you know, my son was, you know, one of my boys was like, man, I was saying, I was wondering how Zion made it. And I looked at his numbers and I was like, oh, well, yeah. I'm like, when he plays, he plays. Yeah, no, sure, <laughs> sure. But it, we always said that about MB when he was missing half the season. Like, that wasn't good enough. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I said, but the difference so, is, the difference is those three other guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think if Tatum was flipped and he was a guard and Brown was the forward, he gets in. But then we'll have an issue with the guards. Because one of those three, Mitchell and Kyrie and Tatum wouldn't be in. Mm-hmm. True, but in order to get the best five, Find some loopholes, man. You know? I mean, I, I don't like you can just go to top five vote getters. You yeah. can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. but if you do that, I don't think Joel gets in that way either. What, what, wasn't he fourth overall? I think he would have. He was fourth. He was fourth overall. Yeah, he was fourth with the bigs, but if you add in two more votes, those guards and or get those votes too. Right. They're gonna get those same five votes too. So the, the bigs always get more votes because it's three picks. Right. Oh, uh, that's that's so that's they're cool. always yeah. getting picked. Mm-hmm. Versus two. Like so if it was two, like it used to be at that position, it would be tighter. But if you're giving three picks and then the guards get two picks, yeah, the guys gonna have fewer total picks because it's only two picks. Mm-hmm. But I bet you if it was three picks. Mitchell and Kyrie will almost be on every ballot, and they'll have more picks. Yeah. That's a good point. He did have more uh, votes in both guards, but yeah. Yeah, that's why. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about the uh, the change up in the voting or not the voting the the, the roster constructions of the All Star game? They're going to do it right before the uh, the game instead of doing it three days beforehand. What do you think about that? I like that change. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, you know, this this way pick up. Just go and you pick your team, and and you go play. Yeah, um, I, I think that whole process shouldn't be set in one way. It kind of needs to be a revolving door, changing a little bit. Yeah. 
I mean, sh- shooting for teams would be a fun way of doing it too. Yeah, that would be pretty fun. <laughs> you know how long that would take? A lot of these guys would make every what three pointers then, right? Yeah, t- 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 <laughs> that wouldn't take those guys as long as you think. <laughs> yeah, I don't Some think of those guys would, <laughs> wouldn't take long at all. Trust me. <laughs> the way they shoot the ball, no, it wouldn't take long. I mean, I just think that um, you know, you you just you switch it up, you do it different differently, and you know, keeps yeah. it more. You got to try to keep it in, you know, the enthusiasm and and competitive at the same time. And I think that kind of changes it up. Yeah. Plus, like the NBA is so versatile now. These guys are so versatile. They play so many, wear so many different hats. The one negative I'd see about shooting for it would be, oh, great. Yeah. Then you've, you have four centers or four big men on one team. But that is not, that's not the way it used to be. It'd be kind of fun to see that, actually. I mean, I mean, yeah, I just, It'd be fun to see Giannis, Jokic, and and, and MB on the on the court at the same time playing together. It'd be, it'd be like, okay, the, the, if I had a downfall, or so I guess you can look at it as a negative about the way they're picking the teams, is it's no game planning. So you can't no have practice, practice or game planning. Yes, you can't have practice or game planning. So you're truly just straight pick up. Mm-hmm. So it's just going to be straight pick and roll and ice one on one. You know what I'm saying? Like. From that standpoint, it's sort of like, you know, what are we doing here? Mm-hmm. So that's the only part that I'm like, uh. How many guys get selected in total to, to All-Star? 24, 12 and 12. 12 and 12, right? Okay. So you could do like a, you know, it would also be cool, like a three-on-three tournament. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, but the, but, but the starters are still starters, though, you know, yeah. even when they pick. So even when they pick, you pick from the starters – then you pick from the reserves. So well, yeah, the same, that, that same, same, same 10 guys are st- still going to start. It just may be a different size from how they were picked. A three on three tournament could be cool on, on Saturday. The, uh, as far as the lead up to the slam dunk contest and the three point guys, you do that during the day with some like the, not the rookies and sophomores type thing. Like, yeah, you, you have like eight, you have eight captains and they, they choose like, um, so eight captains and they, they choose. Guys, lead, look, right? man, them guys, the, it's it's an all star break. They're not trying to do all that. <laughs> they're they're basically doing it anyway, though. That's, they don't want most of the guys just want to get it, want to do what they got to do and get out of there. It's, it's because it's a break. That's they why they work. extended the break and did all that. Like our break was so it was so short that people didn't even want to go to all star break because it wasn't a it wasn't a break. Yeah, it was all traveling and moving from this one to that one. I can imagine that. Like, yeah. We were practicing Monday. Seriously. Yes. Damn. Yes. What was that? A, was that a Larry Brown thing, or was that just pretty much? Yeah, all- especially Brown. Brown didn't give a shit about All Star. We were Brown. playing Tuesday. Oh damn! Wow. It'd be times when we played on like some people play on Thursday and Tuesday, play on Wednesday and Tuesday. Wow. So you play, then all of a sudden you you got to go to All Star. And they have you running around doing all these different stuff. It's not just the game, now. They have them doing all kinds of other stuff. Uh-huh. And you're like, where's the break? Like you can find quotes with Carl Malone and all those guys back then. Was like, oh, oh, this isn't a break. This is just I got to go here and more work. Do this and yeah, you go there. You got to be there. Like you got to check in at a certain time. Like you got to arrive at a certain time. You don't get to just show up whenever you want to show up. Like you, most of those guys had to be there like Friday or Thursday night, something like that. And they do all this media stuff and all these things and all the stuff you got to do. You have practice, charity, everything you got to do. Then leading up to the game, so you haven't done really anything that you really want to do. And then you, you know, su- Sunday, a lot of guys you leave Monday. They didn't practice on Monday, most of them. But you still got to play on Tuesday. I guess no more practice though, because they don't know their team. That's, That's one. Thing. You know, you know, the practice wasn't really a practice. It was like a shoot around. And yeah, stuff like yeah. That. But I'm yeah. just saying you. You kind of game plan something like this is what we're gonna do defensively. This is how we're gonna play pick and rolls, or this is how we're gonna we're gonna switch. You know, whatever you're gonna do, you get your rotations together, and it, mm-hmm. now the coaches are like, uh, I don't even know who the team is. <laughs> I know that's why it's like, what do you just shoot yeah. around? I guess play play horse. I don't know. What do you do? Well, hopefully we get uh, Niang in the three point contest. Hopefully we have some like rooting interest because I, 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 our our G League. Um, uh, Blue Coats, uh, Mac McClung is going to be in the the slam dunk contest. Um, who he was a badass. He, he played at Georgetown. He was. He, he, yeah, he could, I know who he is. He, 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 get, he get up. That there. tells me that that it may be time for the dunk contest to go. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying. Wait, wait, hold on. What if it's better, though? No, I'm saying not a knock on Matt. Like, he is actually a, a great dunker. I'm just saying for the fact that if we're having a G League guy play in it, it's, it's lost his luster. Like, LeBron James has been in the league for 20 years and never been in it. Yeah. John Morant, one of the best highlight guys we have. Anthony Edwards, like, these guys aren't doing it. Mm hmm. Do you think LeBron kind of changed that though? Because the high profile guys used to do it all the time. Well, Blake Griffin he definitely did. he definitely didn't help it. It made I think it made it easier for guys to be like, no, I'm good. I wonder, I always wonder why John Moran's never been in it. With yeah. all them highlight dunks and all that stuff, and he does. That's weird. LeBron's never been in it. I always <laughs> thought it was weird. LeBron never did it. I always thought it was odd. <laughs> So if you got those guys that won't do it, a lot of guys won't do it because they like, dude, it's it's hard on your body. But you think that's why LeBron? I thought I always thought LeBron just didn't want to lose. That's what was communicated to me. Like, I don't want to do all that on the on the, you know, it's just too much. Oh, you mean like you just wear and tear on your body? Yes. Okay. Like it wasn't like it's more, it's not really a positive. Wasn't viewed as a positive. It wasn't it anything. It wasn't worth it. That people coming in in this league and be like, "Hey, I want to be the slam dunk champion." No, they don't care. Yeah, it's more people that say, "I'd rather be the three point shooting champion than dunk." Now that's taking off mm -hmm. to me, especially because of the the way the game has and you the, know the more people shooting the yeah. three and, and and how they push the three point shot more. That's become more of a the thing to do to me, that's the signature event now to me. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. As a kid, that was always my favorite was the three point contest. Ian Corver, Quinn Richardson, Pages Toyakovich go at it. That was fun, man. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it'd be cool if you want to change the dunk contest and then we're on top off topic, but have the have like a, a group of the judges, a dunk contest like you know, gurus come up with dunks. And you draw a card as a dunker, and you have to do that dunk. Because I mean, these guys aren't coming up with anything new. Like you're trying stuff. to come up with all this stuff. That's just just move get rid on. Of it. Just get rid of it. Yeah. 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 Just, you see the NFL, what they're doing with their Pro Bowl and all that. All the stuff just changed, man. Yeah. What, flag football. And they, and flag they, and they, I'm just saying, but they change. And they all the kind of skills and flag, but it changed because guys are like, man, we're not risking this anymore. Mm -hmm, it yeah. becomes. From went from tackling to touch and not wanting to get hit, so they just like, well, we don't need it anymore. Yeah. To me, that's how I view like the dunk contest. I thought it was fun they did volleyball. Like guys are doing like really, really good dunks, and we like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's been good for a really long time. Nah, it's been yeah. A that's what I'm saying. Like really good hard dunks, and you know, it's just. But it's every time good. I watch a college dunk contest, it's awesome. Why? You don't I, know. I never, I never got that. The calls just like blew my, blew my mind. That's true. You don't know. Yeah. You don't know them. Plus, they still only do one dunk. Half the guys that do the dunk contest now, I don't know though. The NBA. Yeah, but they, but they, the multiple dunks to me has been a big negative. Mm -hmm. The waters are down a little bit. Yes. Yeah. You, you missed it. Back in the day, you missed it. Oh well, we yeah. move on to the next dude. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So so far, the only three guys who are confirmed of doing the dunk contest are uh, Portland Trailblazers, Shaden Sharp, uh, Houston Rockets, KJ Martin, and uh, Mac McClung for our Sixers G League squad, Delaware Blue Coats. <laughs> nice. That, and, and the Yanks apparently he's petitioning to be into in the three point contest. So they haven't released the, the participants for that yet. But uh, hopefully we hopefully we get a uh, a Sixer in there because we, we haven't had one since quarter. And Maxie's not going to be in it. I I haven't read anything about him per, uh, trying to petition himself to be in it. The, the only ones in the Yang so far. So but, Yang is petitioning himself. The yeah, Sixers are doing it. It said he's petitioning himself to get in. That was an article I read like like last week. Got it. You know, Yang got five All Star votes, right? Did he really? Players. I mean, I'm sure they were all teammates, but that's great. <laughs> Seriously, players. Yeah. Huh? Players. Yeah, five players voted Niang to the All Star game. 
I mean, that tells you that they're not really taking. You can't take this voting seriously if they're doing <laughs> yeah. that. There was a whole list of like random players that got player votes. Yeah. So. Like Bobo got a bunch. Really? Yeah, so so when people do that, and they used to always complain about the fans shouldn't have as much control because they felt like they were picking the wrong guys, mm-hmm. and now players doing that type of stuff shows <laughs> you that it's it's just it's really part of it's probably a joke. Yeah, making a joke. So I don't know why people get so, as Doc say, emotional about these votes. <laughs> because as you can see amongst the players, if they're doing that, they're not team taking it serious. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. So let's close it out here with the uh, predictions for the next two games we have. Uh, so tomorrow, rivalry game. Nuggets are coming to Philadelphia. Line is not Maybe. out for this game. Um, and I'm calling this the the real MVP classic um, between uh, our guy Embiid and uh, Jokic. Uh, line's not out yet. I think there's a way to see. Is Joker playing? Yeah, that, that's the thing. I think they're waiting to see if he's going to play. Um, and I, I believe Murray's been uh, GTD a few times this week. I haven't in my fantasy basketball league, and he's been. I thought I saw MPJ uh, has been out for personal reasons. He might come back tomorrow. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure ABC and Disney's hoping these guys all come back for this. Rivalry. Oh, they're making phone calls to Denver, being like, "Yep, get him out yeah. there." Yeah, and and and, be, and none of our guys are on the injury report as, as of right now, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, line's not out yet. I'm I'm gonna guess we'll probably be a two to three point favor for this one being at home. Um, but uh, who do you guys have uh, in this one? We'll win. We have to win this game. Got to make a point against the team that's leading the West, and Joel has to make a point. But he's the MVP. I think we win a really tight game. I'd say under t- that spread would be tough to take. Actually, I might even buy points to take. If, it. if based on your spread, I'll take. I'll say we beat the spread. Based right, you were, the yeah. yeah. I said we'll win by like under four. Um, did some deep diving into the stats. Um, I don't know what the props parlays are going to be for the you know the the single game, but I like Jokic uh, thirty five points, rebounds, assists. Uh, Jokic seven rebounds or more. He's never gone below seven against the Sixers before, so that's a good one. Um, I don't know how many minutes they're going to give uh, Michael Porter Jr. in his first game back. I expect him not to overload him. Uh, that means I expect Bruce Brown to play a decent amount, who's been a good filler for them. He'll put up some good numbers. And then um, Harden steal, um, and then MB block. A lot of, they've given up a lot of blocks lately. Nice. All right, uh, so moving on to uh, the next game. So Monday, um, our, the last game for our next show, um, we play the Magic. The Magic are coming to town. We play them two times next week, so we got some uh, got some cupcakes coming our way. But Magic, you know, they beat Boston the other night. So it beat Boston three times. Yeah. Three times? They beat them three times this year. I believe they beat them both times in Boston, back-to-back, and then wow. just beat them, I believe. Uh, not, not really a cupcake then. Um, so uh, who do you guys have? If all our guys are playing, all their guys are playing, who do you guys have Monday? We'll, we'll beat Orlando. I think it'll be a tougher matchup. I don't think we'll blow them out, but I, I think we we can beat them. I think we'll beat them. We'll take care of our home. We got to start getting ready for some of these national televised games and road games that are going to be coming our way. Yeah. I expect – one or two guys to sit in that game, um, especially if they all play in Denver or against Denver. Why wow, would a day I, off? That matters nowadays. <laughs> I'm just saying, like it's not like it's a back to back. Like, what's the, and you're at home? Like, what's the significance of like what are you going to gain? I just think Embiid came up on that one dunk, unnecessary dunk that he kind of like he grabbed his leg. I think if he plays on it, I could see them definitely giving him a rest maintenance day. I could just I, I could I mean I think he's more likely to sit against Orlando than he is against Denver. Like if we were if we were playing Orlando tomorrow, I'd say he'd I, I would guess he'd sit tomorrow. But I think he wants to play against Denver. So then you can play against Orlando. Hey, play every game really. Hey, do all eighty two. I'm not understanding that. Like I'm not understanding. You can play against one team and not another. That's just my guess. They haven't. I haven't read anything about that. I just. Yeah, I, I, guess. I don't understand this low. Harden and or Embiid will sit in that game. Is my guess. Um, uh, Magic are playing pretty good ball, by the way. They their winners are three out of four going into tonight's Heat game. Heat game. Uh, they won. They beat the Celtics. They beat the Pelicans. And they lost by combined seven points against Jazz and Nuggets. So they're they're playing maybe their best ball of the season. Um, 
Carter, I like having eight plus rebounds. He's averaged uh, nine over his last six games. Uh, Wagner, I like 25 points and rebounds and assists. He's done five out of his last six. I like Fultz to have a good game against us, uh, at least five plus assists. I'm tempted to go Benchero because he gets just plays so much and he shoots so much for them. Um, and uh, I whoever our starting five is, I'm going to take like three or four of their their props because people stat like, uh, stuff stats against Orlando. Yeah, look at our next uh, five games. We got Magic, Magic, uh, travel to San Antonio on. So we go Monday, Matt, Monday, Wednesday, Magic at home, and then we travel to San Antonio Friday. And then we travel to New York Sunday, and then we're off till Wednesday. But that's at Boston, so that'll be a that'll be a fun one. Some Sixers Boston game. That, they that that could be based on the way Boston's losing right now. That that could be for the one seed. Absolutely, especially with our schedule coming up. Yeah, we may yeah. not play though. You <laughs> hey 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 one based Eric. on Tasia, we Eric. can be guaranteed them wins because guys may not play. <laughs> those games he just listed, there are no back to backs. You think MB and Harden are playing in all those games? It's no back to backs. You think they're gonna play in every single one of those games? Orlando, Orlando, San Antonio, blah 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 blah. You think yes, you I, I believe that they'll play them games because you got the all star break coming up. Yeah, I, I truly do. Yeah, I, I think the guy. I think the guys see blood in the water. Too. Harden and Embiid just Boston. missed one like three games ago, didn't they? I mean, uh, what? The, what the the All Star game is two. What? No, it's three weeks. Three weeks from this. What this week is three weeks. Three weeks away. Didn't Harden and Embiid just miss one though? Like two, three games ago. Back to back. Was it a back to back that night? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Feb- February eighteenth and nineteenth All Star weekend. So, yeah, we're coming up here soon. They might call it knee soreness, though, Eric. <laughs> it may not be back to back, but I'm just saying, like, yeah, it's Embiid's going to be out with knee soreness. There you go. Yeah, the only back to back that I see that we have coming up would be February 10th and February 11th. Um, uh, Knicks come to Philly, and then we go to uh, Brooklyn. So it's the only that's the only back. Yeah, they're not playing in the Brooklyn game. One of them games they're going to sit out. They gonna yeah, be De- definitely. Yeah. yeah. Especially if Simmons is not playing in that game. He's got his knee soreness stuff still going on. Still, still, still. Be killing man. man, that might go around like, 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 like flu. Knee soreness might just be going around contagion, man. How do we say something about being that we got guys just sitting out and we just, you just assume when our guys are sitting out? What's the difference? If MB got tapped in the face and then he didn't play the rest of the game with knee soreness, I, I'd, I'd make fun of him. <laughs> well, so you're just saying it's a Ben thing. So, so with us, it's not a, a bent. It's, so it's not. So what is it with us? It's, it's just a like maintenance thing. Just rest. <laughs> yeah. We played really hard the other night. Let's get a little. Let's get some, da- <laughs> let's get some daiquiris and let's, let's chill out. I don't get it, man. <laughs> I like, mean, I don't get it. I mean, to me, the games were fun. Like you want to play in the games. Yeah, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm like, hey, y'all on the other part, y'all can have that practice stuff. Mm. But <laughs> <laughs> I, the games, I'm like, I'm not. We could always be like you, like. Just couldn't have us just sit out and and like and and you're healthy to play. <laughs> well, did you see that Miami Heat Butler thing the other night where the kid came? He said, "I flew here for thousands of miles just to see Butler play," and he sat out the last minute. I mean, he made it. He made it right by like bringing him. He brought him down to the the, the floor and uh, and showed him in the locker room. Signed. Yeah, but why do they feel the need to do that? Because he, he felt bad. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, they got skewered. The kids are when the kid was there, didn't know he wasn't playing, and they yeah. told them started bawling and stuff on the on, on the spot. And they were like, "Dude, this is bad PR, man." So was he, was he a kid? Or was he like a, like a grown man? Who, no, he was a kid. He was. I seen he was a young kid. He was a kid. They they they, they made yeah, it. I cried right. too. I flew a thousands of miles to see him. Beat no, they they, they, they they made it right. Yeah, they did. Yeah, but I know how you know Mickey and Pat and those guys how they operate. Like they. they it wouldn't surprise me if they flew the kid back. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. just know how they are. Would, yeah. would it be different if it was a grown man? Like, it was like a 25 year old flying from like thousands of miles to a game and like the guy's a temper tantrum bathroom with it? Would what it make you, it right? Doing, no? Why are you starting stuff, man? It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be any different. <laughs> why are you starting stuff? If I fly, my, if I fly hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles to see and be playing, yes, yes, play. yes they're going to treat a grown man different than a child, man. That's weak. <laughs> That's weak. We're all, it's all spend the same money to go to that game, and I love grown, it. Look, grown people flew with him, and we who had him be on the back of our jerseys? You saying the young kid didn't fly by himself? Yeah, but they only showing the kid. It's true. 
Well, the, uh, yeah, well, we know the optics look a lot worse for the kid. Definitely, yeah. right? So, you no, know, if, if a grown man did that and he started bawling and crying, you're going to be like, what's wrong with this guy crying? Like, you wouldn't even think about that he did him wrong. You're going to say something's wrong with him. I'll yeah, tell you true. what, though. <laughs> it, it, it'd, be a, it, it'd be a viral meme or a video. Yes, he would. And if that tweet went viral the same way, I think they would bring him down. No, they would, would not. You would have. You would, You may have some people that are sensitive to it. You may have other people like, dude, why is this grown man crying? Because he didn't <laughs> see Jimmy Butler play. But but it brings to, but it brings to light sitting out for no reason at the last minute either way. Yes, yeah, so I understand understand that part. But as far as people <laughs> sympathizing with them, like you would have a lot of people be like, "Dude, get a life." All right, how about not crying? <laughs> how about like flipping out and be like, "Yo." Either way it go, either way it go. Like I've seen grown people that are mad when those guys don't play. They mad and and they. Figure it out, you know. They complain in different they ways. Figure it out. I love it. You know what I'm saying? They figure out how to complain in different ways. Like they say something to the league, or they say we bought these tickets for our child or for us, and they only come here once a year, and they don't play. But they're just walking on the sideline and don't look injured. You know, like yeah, yeah. They do it all the time. Jimmy looked all right when he was showing around that stadium. I'll tell you that. I'm much. just saying, people people do that all the time and complain about that. That's why it's an issue now. Mm-hmm. It has to go viral, though. That's the key. Well, it's not. That's why it went viral because it was a young, a younger child. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would go viral for a grown man in a different way, though. Not, not like a sympathetic. Yes, yeah, so it go viral both ways, like yeah. positive and negative. Make, make fun <laughs> of the mentally unstable grown man, but not the kid. Oh, that's great. Yeah, make fun of that guy because that guy's got real problems going on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> All right, fellas. Well, that does it for us. Thanks for tuning in to Believe in 76ers presented by Bet Online. We hope you guys enjoy the rivalry game tomorrow night, and we'll see you guys on Tuesday. All right. Take it easy. Later, guys. Go,